yes so in this session we'll look into detaily about the the different concepts in statistics which is used for data analytics so in this session we'll discuss detaily about what is central tendency and mean median mode and uh, also we'll discuss about the measure of dispersions and distribution of shape outliers like different aspects we'll look into in detailed way so what is mean by statistics what is statistics statistics means it is a collection organization analysis and interpretation of data is called statistics statistics means it is the analysis of data which is used to analyze and interpret the data that's why we go for statistics statistics mainly helps to give the numerical conclusions when we want to make the numerical conclusions we go for statistics for example anyone ask you about how many people are using youtube application so we can't say that the large number of people more number of people are watching youtube channel we can't conclude that we need to give the numerical way if we give the conclusion that gives more meaning in that for example we can say 6 to 8 pm in the weekdays most of the people watching youtube and 8 to 11 pm in especially in the weekend most of them watching youtube application one in four youtube videos are shared with their friends okay so we can we can give the numerical conclusions for example 400 tweets each minutes contain a youtube link so that is the numerical way of concluding is called statistics statistics includes the various concepts like design of experiment sampling descriptive statistics inferential statistics probability these are all the different modules involved in the statistics statistics comprises of five modules that is experimental design which is used to understand the characteristics of the data set also sampling which is used to understand the samples descriptive statistics which is a summarization of data and inferential statistics which gives the hypothesis way of concluding the result is inferential statistics probability so these are all the different modules involved in the statistics so statistics means it is mainly helps to make the decision by using statistics we can make the decisions also with the help of statistics we can read and interpret the result statistics is a systematic way of approaching the data that's why we go for statistics with the help of statistics we can evaluate the information so these are all the ways these are all the things are there with the statistics mainly helps to make these are all the different aspects for example with respect to linkedin application we can say 313 million members are using linkedin application across 200 plus countries 39 million students and recent college graduates were using linkedin 3 million companies were using linkedin application across the globe 45 percentage of the people watching via mobile phones only the linkedin application okay 35 percentage of the user uses linkedin daily they are using the linkedin application two new users joins every second 2.1 million linkedin groups are there so if we give the numerical way of conclusion it gives more meaning okay so whereas if you are giving qualitative way of result that give, that will not give the meaningful result so whenever we go for statistics statistics gives a numerical conclusion so when we want to give the numerical conclusion it gives more meaning in our analysis that's why we go for statistics statistics gives a numerical way of 
concluding the result. That's why we go for statistics. Why we want to learn statistics? There are different purpose. Number one, we are learning statistics because we can absorb the information properly. We can absorb that by using statistics. We can draw the conclusion. The large volume of data set also we can make the proper conclusion by using statistics. By using statistics, we can make the reliable forecasting. By using statistics, we can improvise the business process also. So these are all the various reasons we are going for statistics. By using statistics, we can make the meaningful result we can able to make that. That's why we go for statistics. So statistics means it is a numerical way of concluding the result is called statistics. In the statistics, there are two types are there. One is descriptive statistics. Another is inferential statistics. Descriptive statistics means it is a summarization of data. Without using hypothesis, if you are concluding the result is called descriptive statistics. Whereas inferential statistics means we can use the hypothesis with the help of hypothesis and concluding the result is called inferential statistics. Okay, descriptive statistics means it is a summarization of data. Without using hypothesis, if you are concluding the result is called descriptive statistics. Whereas inferential means by using hypothesis, concluding the result is called inferential statistics. When we go for descriptive statistics, it is just the summarization of data. Computing mean, median, mode, standard deviations and all. So without using hypothesis, if you are concluding the result is called inferential descriptive statistics. Descriptive means it is a summarization of data. Without using hypothesis, if you are concluding the result is descriptive that is we can compute mean median mode standard deviations and all whereas inferential means taking the small sample and drawing the conclusion of entire population is called inferential statistics so in the inferential statistics we can use the hypothesis by using hypothesis, concluding the result is called inferential statistics. Inferential means we can use a hypothesis. So with the help of hypothesis, concluding the result is called inferential statistics. So we'll look into detail about the descriptive and inferential. So descriptive means it is a summarization without using hypothesis. If you are concluding the result is called descriptive statistics. Whereas inferential means taking the small sample and drawing the conclusion of the entire population is called inferential statistics. Okay. We can take the small sample. For example, what is the number of average number of votes registered? The election votes registered in Annanagar. Okay, that is sample. Population means what is the average number of votes registered in entire Chennai city? That is population. Okay, or what is the average number of votes registered in Bandra? The population mean is what is the average number of votes registered in entire Mumbai city? So that is called a sample and population. Inferential means by using hypothesis, 
concluding the result is called inferential statistics so when we go for statistics there are two types of variables the variable is broadly classified into two types one is categorical variable another is numerical variable categorical variable means which is measured in which is not measured in numbers when we go for categorical variable which is not measured in number which is predefined for example gender male female season summer winter anthem spring that is categorical variable categorical variable means which is predefined whereas a numerical variable means which is measured in numbers we call it as numerical variable so in the numerical variable we have two types one is discrete variable another is continuous variable okay there are two types are there one is discrete and another is continuous discrete means which is finite in range continuous means which is infinite in range discrete means what is the average number of students in the classroom or what is the number of students in the classroom that is finite in range 1 to 40 which is finite which is discrete discrete means which is finite in range whereas continuous means which is infinite in range it can be any values that is infinite okay so variable is a broadly classified into categorical and numerical categorical variable means it is a qualitative one for example gender male female marital status yes or no likewise specialization in mba marketing finance operation hr that is categorical variable so categorical variable means which is which is predefined which is not measured in numbers whereas numerical variable means which is measured in numbers which comprises of two types discrete and continuous so discrete variable is finite in range whereas continuous variable is infinite in range these are all the two different variables now we are going to discuss these two variables these numerical variable only we are going to discuss in the descriptive statistics so when we go for descriptive statistics there are three different modules that is measure of central tendency measure of dispersion and distribution of shape these are all the three modules the first module is measure of central tendency which is used for summarization which includes mean median mode and all measure of dispersion or measure of spread includes range quartile percentile absolute deviation variance and standard deviation the measure of summary or symmetric we can go for skewness skewness is used to measure the symmetricness of the data then measure of peakness we can go for kurtosis so kurtosis is used to measure the peakness of the data so these are all the different modules in the statistics when we go for statistics these are all the different modules the first module is measure of central tendency which comprises of different concepts like mean median and mode 
these are all the different concepts the first concept is mean so mean is nothing but average there are different types of mean out of which the first one is sample mean sample mean is nothing but to find the average for the particular sample if you are going to find the average for particular sample we go for sample mean okay sample mean is used to find the average for the particular sample we go for sample mean okay sample mean is nothing but particular sample which i already said right so what is the average number of election votes registered in jp nahar is called sample population means what is the average number of election votes registered in entire bangalore city that is population mean sample mean is particular sample whereas population mean is nothing but entire population is called population mean okay so let me give an example for example there is a apartment okay there is a apartment which comprises of 70 flats there is a apartment which comprises of 70 flats in that each and every flat rent is mentioned in dollars okay rent is mentioned in dollars if you want to find the sample mean we can add all the values divided by number of observation that is sample mean sample mean is nothing but for finding the particular sample adding all the values divided by number of observation is a sample mean okay sample mean is particular sample if you want to find we go for sample mean okay so for example adding all the values divided by number of observation is a sample mean okay 490 is a sample mean next weighted mean weighted mean is nothing but it is used to find the average with respect to category wise if you want to find the average with respect to category wise we go for weighted mean for example assume that you are constructing a house in that different types of workers were involved like plumber electrician labor painter engineer like different types of workers so each categories of workers per day wage is different okay different wages for different workers so that is weighted mean so weighted mean is used for category wise we can use weighted mean so when we go for weighted mean that is summation of wi into xi divided by summation of wi wi is a weight and x is a individual value w is a weight that is weighted mean weighted mean is always used for category wise we go for weighted mean for example so you are constructing a house there are different types of workers like carpenter electrician labor painter plumber like different types of workers so each categories of workers per our wage is different different wage for different workers the total number of workers hours also mentioned here so if you multiply this you will get the wi into xi so we can get the weighted mean 20.05 dollar is the weighted mean 
so weighted mean is mainly used for category wise we can go for weighted mean weighted mean is used to find the average for categorical variable we go for weighted mean next trimmed mean trimmed mean is mainly used to find the average by removing the extreme values by removing the extreme value and finding the average is called a trimmed mean okay trimmed mean is nothing but to remove the extreme value by removing the extreme value and finding the average is called a trimmed mean for example in a class of 10 there are 40 students were there out of which only one student scored 99 marks the second highest mark in the max is 65 third highest mark is 63 62 fourth mean 60 so only one student scored 99 marks because of one student we can't conclude that this class is a high performing student we can't conclude so trimmed mean is removing the extreme value and finding the average is called a trimmed mean so trimmed mean is nothing but not only removing the higher value we can remove the lower value also not only for larger value it is also remove the smaller value also so trimmed mean is used to remove the extreme value and finding the average is called the trimmed mean trimmed mean is used to remove the extreme values and finding the average is called the trimmed mean okay it is not only be the higher value it can be lower value also so outlier is not only the higher value outlier is also the smaller value also that is trimmed mean trimmed mean is nothing but removing the extreme value or removing the outliers and finding the average is called trimmed mean next geometric mean so geometric mean is nothing but to find the growth rate of the company so when you want to find the growth rate of the company we go for geometric mean geometric mean is mainly used to find the growth rate for that we go for geometric mean for example the geometric mean is compute by using this formula that is nth root of x1 x2 and xn okay x1 x2 x3 are the individual year growth so if you take the nth root we'll get the geometric mean we can find for example every year there is a return is mentioned and if you convert into the growth factors so we have 0.94 in the first year second year 0.920 third 0.96 every year there is a growth factor so geometric mean is mainly used to find the growth rate of the company so when we want to find the growth rate we go for geometric mean geometric mean is mainly used to find the growth rate of the company so these are all the different types of mean so far we discussed sample mean population mean weighted mean trimmed mean geometric mean these are all the five types of mean we have in the statistics which is used for data analytics next the next concept is median so median is mainly used to find the middle values 
so when we want to find the middle values we go for median so whenever we want to find the median we need to arrange the value in ascending order okay then only we can find the median median is the middle values if it is odd number of observation if we have odd number of observation we can take middle values and we can say we can take middle value and we can say that is median so median is nothing but finding the middle values and so arranging the value in ascending order and finding the midpoint is called median if it is even number of observation we can take middle two values and find the midpoint is called median for example there is a apartment which comprises of 70 flats each and every flat rent is mentioned here okay if you want to find the median we can arrange the value in ascending order and we can find the midpoint here that is median okay here 475 is the median which is middle value median is used to find the middle values next the next concept is mode mode is used to find the most repeated values we call it as mode so in this example which flavor of ice cream most of the customer purchased there is vanilla chocolate strawberry okay neapolitan and butter peon rocky rod fudge so in the the vanilla is the most frequently occurring values that is called mode mode is the most frequently occurring value is mode okay that is mode here if you look into here there are around 70 flats in the 450 the dollar 450 is a most frequently occurring value is 450 okay 450 is the most frequently occurring values that is mode mode is the most frequently occurring value is mode so these are all the different concepts which is come under measure of central tendency like mean median and mode mean is nothing but average median is used to find the middle values mode is the most repeated value is mode so these are all the different concepts of measure of central tendency okay let me give an example the hot spot the hot shot sales executive case study here the kurt works as a sales manager at vsellshomes.com in the monthly sales review kurt reports that he will achieve his quarterly target of dollar 1 million Kurt climb his average deal size is dollar one lakh and he has 10 deals in his pipeline Kurt's Ross Kurt's boss Ross is very delighted with his number at the end of the quarter even after closing eight deals Kurt failed to meet his target number and fall short by more than five lakhs dollar so why he falls short by five lakhs dollar even closing eight deals see 
what is the case study here the kurt the, the kurt works as a sales manager at vsellshomes.com in the monthly sales review kurt reports that he will achieve his quarterly target is 1 million so 1 million is a quarterly target the average deal size is 1 lakh so one deal size is dollar one lakh so 10 deals so 10 into 1 lakh dollar 1 million so kurt boss ross is very delighted with his number at the end of the quarter even after closing eight deals even after closing eight deals kurtz fails to meet his target number and fall short by more than five lakhs dollars dollar five lakhs why he falls short by five lakhs what is the reason so it is mentioned that average deal size okay average is not the accurate one it is the approximate one only so average is not accurate so there is some outlier is there so we need to remove the outliers and we need to find the average so that is a trimmed mean concept whenever we are going to find the average we need to remove the extreme value and find the average is called a trimmed mean okay these are all the different concepts which is there in the measure of central tendency the second module is measure of dispersion is a second module okay in this measure of dispersion we have different concepts like range variance standard deviation percentile quartile interquartile range so these are all the different concepts which is there under measure of dispersion measure of dispersion also used to explain the spread of data how the data is spreaded so that is explained in the measure of dispersion the first one is range range is used to find the maximum minus minimum value is called range so when you want to find the range largest value minus smallest value is called range here 615 minus 425 is a range so larger value minus smaller value is called range whenever we want to find the range always we need to arrange the value in ascending order we need to find the range okay range is nothing but maximum minus minimum value is called range next mean deviation mean deviation is nothing but how much the value is deviating from the mean that is called mean deviation mean deviation means how much value is deviating from the mean is called mean deviation next percentile so percentile is mainly used to find the relative position so percentile is different from percentage percentage means out of 100 what is the value that is percentage so percentage means out of 100 what is the value that is called percentage percentile means relative position 
so if you want to find the relative position we go for percentile so percentile is always used in the competitive exams like cat mat that in these places and all if you want to find the relative position among the group of people what is the particular position if you want to find we go for percentile Percentile is different from percentage. Percentage means out of 100. Percentile means among the group of people, what is the position? That is find out in the percentile. We can find the percentile by using this formula. That is P by 100 into N. P is nothing but the position. N is nothing but the number of responses we consider for our analysis. That is N. So whenever we go for percentile, always remember that we need to arrange the value in ascending order. Then only we can find the percentile. For example, I want to find the 80th percentile I want to find. So if that is the case, 80 by 100 into N, N is the number of responses. Okay, 80 is the position which we want to find. So 80 by 100 into number of observation is 70. Okay, 80 by 100 into 70. So we are getting 56. So 56 is the even number. So whenever we have an even number, we need to take the next consecutive values we need to take. So 56 and 57, we need to take. So 56 and 57, 56th position is 535. 57th position is 549. If you take the midpoint, we can find 542. So the 80th percentile is 542 is the 80th percentile. That is percentile is nothing but the relative position. We go for percentile. Then we go for quartiles. Quartiles means a quarterly basis. If you want to find we go for quartile. So in the quartile we have first quartile second quartile third quartiles and all when we have first quartile which means the 25th position is the first quartile 50th position is second quartile 75th position is the third quartile okay quartile is used to find the quarterly basis we can find for example, if I want to find the 75th percentile, we can find like this 75 by 100 into N. That is called third quartile. So 75 by 100 into 70, we are getting 53. So 53 is the odd number. So that is 525 is the third quartile, we can say. So that is quartile. Quartile means quarterly basis we can find. Next, interquartile range. Interquartile range means subtracting two different quartile is an interquartile range. That is, third quartile minus first quartile is an interquartile range. That is, 75th position minus 25th position is the interquartile range. Q3 minus Q1 is the interquartile range. 75th position minus 25th position is the interquartile range. That is 525 minus 445 is the interquartile range. That is 80 is the interquartile. Okay, the next concept is variance. 
so variance is mainly used to find the variation in the data set that's why we go for variance so variance is mainly used to measure the variance in the data set how much variation in the data set let me give an example with respect to variance for example there is a class of 10 okay there are two sections where there class a and class b both class a and class b studying the same subject english max social regional subjects they are studying both class a and class b if that is the case both class a and class b getting the same day max exam is there same faculty same syllabus same day exam also happen but when it comes to class a one student score 100 out of 100 the second student score 99 third student score 95 fourth is 92 likewise when we look into the class b one student score 100 the second student score 65 third student score 4 different student score different marks so variance is used to find the variation in the data set that's why we go for variance if we have large number of large variance which means variation is high if the variation is low then variance also low variance is used to find the variation in the data set next standard deviation so what is standard deviation so you may learn in your childhood also you may learn about standard deviation you may learn in your childhood what is standard deviation so every concept there is some purpose is there right for example if you take mean mean is used to find the average okay median is used to find the middle values so every concept there is some purpose is there likewise what is the use of standard deviation okay you can think about that what is standard deviation okay let me give an example last year who is the world world cup icic world cup champion that is england okay if that is a case india versus england so i'm taking the two different players as you know very well dhoni from india and yubaraj from india these two player i'm going to take it as a consideration for this example so let me find the average score done by Dhoni it is the average score of Dhoni there are five different match one two three four five also I am finding the sum average and the standard deviation there are two different players first when we take Dhoni the first match he scored around 120 runs whereas Yuvaraj scored 65 runs the second match Dhoni scored 90 runs whereas Yuvaraj scored around 58 runs third match Dhoni scored 30 runs Yuvaraj scored 55 runs 
fourth match, Dhoni scores zero runs, whereas Yuvraj scores 62 runs. Fifth match, Dhoni scores 60 runs. Yuvraj also scores 60 runs. What is the sum, the total score by Dhoni? Is 300. When we go for Yuvraj, the total score is 300. When we take average, the average score by Dhoni is 60. Whereas Yuvraj, what is the score by Yuvraj? Is 60. Whereas when we go for standard deviation, the standard deviation of Dhoni is how much? 47. When we go for standard deviation of average of all these five matches, 3.8. If you look into this example, both Dhoni as well as Yuvraj, they score same runs, average also same. But when we look into the standard deviation, the Yuvraj standard deviation is very high compared to Dhoni. The, the Yuvraj standard deviation is low compared to Dhoni. That is standard deviation is high for Dhoni only. So if we have more standard deviation, we can say less consistency. Consistency is less. So Dhoni is less consistent performer compared to Yuvaraj. Yuvaraj is a consistent performer compared to Dhoni. Even though Dhoni is a high scorer, but Dhoni is not consistent performer. But Yuvaraj is a consistent performer. If the standard deviation is a high, the consistency is low. If the standard deviation is low, consistency is high. So standard deviation is used to measure the consistency of the data. Standard deviation is inversely proportional to consistency of the data. That's why we go for standard deviation. Standard deviation is used to measure the consistency of the data we can use. That's why we use the standard deviation. These are all the different concepts which is come under measure of dispersions. Range, standard deviation, variance, percentile, quartile. These are all the different concepts come under the measure of send the dispersion or measure of spread the next module will discuss about the distribution of shape in the next session until see you then thank you